Roger Kornberg and Aaron Klaas were interested in a cell of protein called the histone and how they interact with DNA. There are five different class of histones H1, H2A, H2B, S3 and H4. Histone bind to DNA to form the chromatin. In the nucleus of higher cell, in non-dividing cells, the chromatin is dispersed throughout the nucleus. During prophase, here you can see the cell division. The chromatin condenses into the visible structure we know as chromosomes. This electron micrograph so a cell in metaphase. The chromosomes are lined up in the middle of the cells. The presence of histone protein in the nucleus of higher cells was part of the debates in 1914s about which molecule, DNA or protein, is the hair dietary material. Of course, DNA turned out to have that distinction. However, X-ray diffraction studies later showed that histones play an important role in providing structure for the DNA helix. In 1964, Murick Wilkins and Vittorio Lozati notices that chromatin has a repeated pattern with intervals of about 100 angstrom. This repeat is different from the repeating pattern of DNA itself. Aaron Kles also saw similar X-ray diffraction pattern in chromatin. This repeat suggested that histones play a important role in packaging DNA. Based on the X-ray diffraction pattern and the nuclease experiments, Chromatin was proposed to be DNA and the histone cores it wrapped around. Here you can see histone core and DNA. The 200 base pair repeat observed after nuclease digestion correspond to 200 base pair of DNA wrapped around each histone cores. The 100 angstrom measurement from X-ray diffraction pattern is the wide of the histone core and DNA. Roser Kornberg did experiments that confirmed this model and he also figured out the arrangement of histone in the core. Kornberg individually purified the histones from the DNA. He found that H2A and S2B tend to stick together as do S3 and H4. If the H2A H2B complex was mixed with the H3 H4 complex and naked DNA was added, he got the same X ray pattern as for chromatin. More analysis revealed that each histone core has 8 protein. Two copies each of the H2A, H2B, and H3, H4 complexes. This histone code with wrapped DNA is called nucleosome. This is an electron micrograph of chromatin. The sting is called the 10 nanometer fiber. The beads are nucleosome. But where is the H1 histone? It turned out H1 is not part of histone core, instead it binds between nucleosome to give even more structure to chromatin. H1 side just outside of each nucleosome and intact with the H1 in the next nucleosome. At higher salt concentration, the 10 nanometer fiber is further compacted into 30 nanometer fiber. The DNA helix is already twisted by adding 
twist to make this nucleosome and solenoid structure. The DNA is supercoiled. H1 play a role as linker DNA. The DNA helix is already twisted by adding twist to make this nucleosome and solenoid structure. The DNA is supercoiled. Even more organization is involved in maintaining the condensed chromosome. Loops of DNA are attached to a protein a scaffold made up of several non-histone protein. This scaffold maintain the shape of chromosome even in absence of histones. Protein scaffold Chromosome are really one continuous piece of DNA. In this electron micrograph, you can see the DNA strand from one chromosome after the histone have been removed. Up to 6 feet of DNA is packaged to feed into nucleus of one cell. The DNA is first wrapped around the histone core to form nucleosome and the 10 nanometer fiber. 10 nanometer fiber up to 6 feet of DNA packages. The 10 nanometer fiber is further coiled into 30 nanometer fiber where 6 nucleosome make one turn. The 30 nanometer fiber is then looped onto protein scaffold when chromosome condenses. 